grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus. Amen. Have you ever been out walking in the woods with someone who knows a lot about wild foods, about which wild plants are edible and how to prepare them? When you're with someone who has that kind of knowledge, an unwelcoming wilderness is transformed into a buffet of delicious foods as they point out wild greens like ramps and wild sorrel, savory oyster mushrooms, chanterelles and chicken of the woods, sweet blackberries and huckleberries. It's enchanting to have your eyes opened to the riches of these foods that here in the Virginia mountains and valleys often hide in plain sight, especially after a long day of hiking when all you can think about is what's for dinner. Spending time with someone who really knows how to identify wild foods can change the way you see a wild landscape. He or she can transform your perspective from one of scarcity to one of abundance, from unsatisfied hunger to the delight of harvesting and preparing delicious food. Perspective of scarcity transformed into one of abundance. I think the default setting for us as sinful and broken human beings is scarcity. Our natural resting state is one of thanklessness and deficit. We give all of our attention to the next thing that we want to achieve or to acquire, and we lose sight of all the blessings that we already have. Life will only be good after we do X or achieve Y. Our economy is built on this hunger that we always have to be pursuing something or some goal, and we fail to see the richness that our lives already possess. We forgot a long time ago how to count our blessings and how to be content and grateful for what we have. But in times when life is hardest, and when we fear that something or someone we love might be taken from us, then we're suddenly aware of how much we are blessed. When we face a loss, whether it's a lost job or a broken relationship or the illness of someone in our family, then suddenly the richness of the life that we have comes into such sharp focus. When life has knocked us down and we're scrambling to get back up on our feet, we can see more clearly the resources that we do have. When we're faced with the reality that our lives are finite, that's precisely when we understand just how precious and sweet life is. It's easy to imagine what the disciples were feeling as they stood on that hillside, watching the sun start to sink low behind the horizon, their own stomachs beginning to rumble. They could see restlessness and hunger starting to show on the faces of the people gathered there. They could hear those who were less afraid to speak their minds, little children and the old folks, saying loud enough for anyone to hear, I'm hungry. And so the disciples, after glancing at one another and nodding, came up to Jesus and said to him, we've got to send everyone away so that they can go find food. As they looked out at the empty landscape and the hungry faces, their perspective was surely one of scarcity. All they could see was what they didn't have, food for several thousand people. So when Jesus said, they need not go away, you yourselves give them something to eat, the disciples must have given Jesus and each other some bewildered looks. What do we have to give them? We don't even have food for ourselves, Jesus. How on earth can we give them something to eat? What do you think about Jesus' statement? Why did he say that to them? Why did he tell them to go feed those thousands when he knew perfectly well that they didn't have any more than a little boy's lunch of five loaves and two fish? I don't think he intended to make his disciples squirm with guilt, as if somehow they should have been prepared to feed this village of people but failed. No, Jesus said what he said because he wanted to transform their perspective of scarcity into one of abundance. He wanted them to really take stock of their resources and realize what they had. What did they have? What did they have to share with this hungry crowd? They had a lot more than they first realized. In her book, Seeds of Heaven, Barbara Brown Taylor imagines the disciples' response. She writes, 
There are 5,000 people out there, Jesus. No disrespect intended, but you are not making sense. And she goes on to say, Jesus may not have been making sense, but then again, he may, had, he may have had a sense of the situation that went beyond the disciples' common sense. They were, after all, operating out of a sense of scarcity. They looked at the crowd, saw no picnic baskets or backpacks, and assumed that no one had anything to eat. They looked at their own meager resources and assumed it was not enough to go around for their own circle, much less to feed the entire crowd. But Jesus operated out of a different set of assumptions. If the disciples operated out of a sense of scarcity, then what Jesus operated out of was a sense of plenty. He looked at the same thing the disciples looked at, but where they saw not enough, he saw plenty. Plenty of time, plenty of food, plenty of possibilities with the resources at hand. Not that he knew how it was all going to work out exactly. He was human, remember, as well as divine. But what Jesus knew beyond a shadow of a doubt was that whenever there was plenty of God, there would be plenty of everything else. I so appreciate the insight that Barbara Brown Taylor shares here. Jesus saw that what they had was plenty of God. They had the Son of God, God's love and salvation in human form present right within their midst. And they had the faith of the people ready to receive God's gifts. What they had was powerful. The disciples would eventually learn that the combination of Jesus's presence plus the faith and hunger of the people, that that would be enough to feed a crowd, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to transform the world. Now, in this story, it's Jesus who takes the initiative in showing everyone that in his presence, what they had would become enough. His mother took the initiative at the beginning of John's gospel at the wedding of Cana, when she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary reminds us that we have abundantly more resources than we think we do because we have Jesus's presence and power. Here in Matthew's gospel, Jesus reminds us of that as well. And now it's our turn to take the initiative to say when everyone around us is caught up in a position of scarcity, it's going to be okay. Jesus is with us. And when we have him, then we also have everything else. Now might be just the right time to reassure your neighbor or your family member that God's got this, that God sees their need and won't let them down. It's our turn to take the initiative. And instead of looking around at all the need and despair in the world from a sense of scarcity, to look at that need to which we are being called and say in faith, Jesus is here. So we have more than enough. God is with us. And when we do what the disciples did, when we take stock of our blessings and freely and gratefully give them back to Jesus to use as he will, then he'll not only take care of us and our neighbors, but provide such abundance that we'll be gathering up baskets of leftovers and wondering what on earth to do with it all. Over these next days and months, there'll be many times in which our neighbors and our communities will be stuck in a perspective of scarcity. They'll be at a loss for how to go on. Maybe it will be a question of a business being able to make it through this difficult economy. Maybe it'll be a question of the survival of, the, of a relationship as the partners in that relationship struggle to find in their exhaustion, the energy to really be there for one another. Maybe it'll be a question of how to help a young person who's lost as they seek to understand who they are. Maybe it'll be a question of how communities of faith can survive not being together, gathered in worship and song and fellowship Mary and Jesus whisper to us, don't forget to look with the eyes of faith at what you have, what you really have. Yes, you might have just a few dollars. Yes, you might have just a few hours, a few folks gathered, but you also have 
Jesus. You also have all the power of heaven. You have the Holy Spirit and the angels and the prayers of the saints here on earth. Whatever little you have, give it to Jesus, and in his hands it will become more than enough. Amen.